Hey everybody, welcome back to another Brian and Dylan take on the world. We were gone for a week, but we're back. If you haven't had a chance, go check out the YouTube channel, youtube.com slash wickedgoodeverything. We had some awesome PAX East content on there, as well as updates and streams. And without further ado, here's the show. Welcome back! Brian and Dylan take on the world. We are back from our little one-week hiatus. Mm -hmm. We took a little and vacation, you know. Yes, I went down to Cancun, <laughs> and by Cancun, I sat in my living room all day. Yeah, well, it was the Masters, right? Yes. And how did that go? Masters. No, not, not great. good. I'm no, sorry. Tiger, Tiger was not good. <sighs> so uh, sad. No, we've been kind of, we've been kind of revamping and gearing up for what's going to be a pretty busy next couple of weeks yes so avengers we thought it would we would take the time to spend with our families before we don't see them at all for the next like two months <laughs> right and uh yeah it was nice it was nice mm -hmm. um and I, I i said my farewells to them like 10 minutes ago and i said you know see you in like july yeah see when when all these movies are done coming out then uh we'll hang yes. out again the very obvious we have avengers coming out in two weeks but we have a very avengers filled next two weeks mm -hmm. and then after that we'll have solo deadpool and i believe there is things like the ant-man and the wasp comes oh out this God, summer so crazy i believe this um, summer too. yeah it's so this is gonna this is a pretty exciting time and we're having a few video games coming out um, shortly as well that we can talk about. Yeah, so. one we're going to talk about the reviews of very soon. Yes, so it's it's an exciting time, and uh, thank you for returning after a week. If if everyone didn't forget about us, yes, people are probably going to open up their iTunes today and be like, "Oh yeah, I forgot that was a thing." <laughs> oh yeah, this automatically downloads. All right. Yeah, I guess and I'll listen to it. When, I if you did, mention, thank you. I, I forgot to mention that I very dearly missed your voice, Brian. It's nice to talk to you again. You as well. I'm sorry the Masters didn't go as well as you were hoping. It's okay. You know, maybe next year. I don't. I don't it's know. Okay. How it's okay. It's gonna be. I've been enjoying playoff hockey and um, mm. baseball, so I'll survive. Yeah, I'm. I'm gonna try to be more engaged in hockey this this playoff. Bruins are looking pretty damn good. I went to the Bruins last Sunday. Oh, nice. Um, it was good. They lost, but it was an exciting game. Yeah. And then when I was leaving, two drunk guys got into a fight, which was really exciting because there were no fights during the game, which honestly, I came expecting fights to be happening during the game. So a drunken, really poorly like choreographed brawl outside of the bathrooms was just, just what it took to make the night, you know? Did anybody die? No, they were both so drunk they could barely land any punches. Oh, then it was you know it was a, it was a it was a softened down. Yeah, it was a tussle, fight. if you will. So, <laughs> I say we kind of jump into it because uh, now everyone listening to this who probably like doesn't even like sports is semi like getting ready to turn mm -hmm. it off. Yeah, no, that's the <laughs> problem. Like, oh, for we could get everything, we're like the sports guys, and then everyone's just like, please stop talking yes. about sports. Yes, but the Bruins are up two nothing right now on the uh, Maple Leafs. So, yeah. so we're just saying. Like, I'm probably gonna keep talking. I'm gonna I'm gonna keep having like a well, one week update on the Bruins. I, I like that idea. Actually, we do like two minutes of sports. So, all right, that was talking sports. Yep. All right, so let's jump into our first uh, news topic since this is technically gonna be called a quick sode. We are doing uh, top three underrated TV shows. Yes, I'm so excited. I finally get to talk at length about a TV show that is near and dear to my heart. Yes, and as you just mentioned, we are probably going to end up talking in length about these shows, mm -hmm. even though we are going to call this a quick episode, but we're probably still going to end up dropping like 45 minutes of content on you. Right, because, you know, we wanted, we didn't want to do five. We didn't want to stretch it out too much. We wanted to really dig into the shows that we care about, so we made this kind of a top three. Yes. So let's jump into our, our first news topic of the week. And since we've kind of been gone for a week, we wanted to touch up on like two relevant things and maybe two things that we missed last mm -hmm. week. Uh, but this first one is God of War. Yes. Which is set to release on 420. Oh, that's a Friday, actually. Yeah, totally. Like we we bro. Yeah. Oh man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I'm gonna be I'm gonna be I'm gonna be smoking my marijuana cigarettes playing this shit, and I'm gonna be pretty excited because it has like a 10 out of 10 for IGN. Mm -hmm. Which is pretty insane because I don't think they gave Ted Intense anything other than Call of Duty. It's so pretty rare. It's <laughs> impressive, but I'm also like, I'm so fucking excited. Because mm. uh, you just said the, Met the Metacritic score is... 95. Not, yeah, so... And 
the, I, I, I guess like people have been able to play this game like a, a lot before mm-hmm. they reviewed it. Um, cause I was pretty surprised where, when reviews are coming out, when the game was still about a week away, cause usually they come out like a day or two before mm-hmm. and their reviews in progress. Right. So the fact that they've been able to play this game and they're giving it a 10 out of 10 and a 95 mm-hmm. is so exciting. Yeah. And that's definitely something to look at. Um, they certainly had a lot of confidence that this game was going to review well, if they gave mm-hmm. the reviewers this much time to get their reviews out. 100%. And so I'm coming into this that I surprisingly never played any of the other God Wars. Mm-hmm. Well, and it's weird because it was PS2 was the last one, right? It I wasn't like a PS3 God of War. There were like think, collections, but there were Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I believe you're right. Like I said, I never played it, so I kind of didn't really pay a whole lot much attention to it. Mm-hmm. I mean, even though it was a PlayStation exclusive t- uh, title mm-hmm. and I was always PlayStation, right. uh, I just for some reason never got into it. But then I started seeing trailers for this, and I started hearing a lot about how the gameplay is nothing like the older games, where this is, where the gameplay with this is kind of more slowed down. I guess like similar to Bloodborne, mm-hmm. uh, where it's more strategic and not necessarily slower, but it's more it's more strategic based fighting, and I guess it's also a little bit more story driven. Where uh, in the older God of War is. I assumed you were more running around and just hacking the shit out of things. Oh, man. The original God of Wars were fun. They were perfect for the time that yep. they came out. Um, they were just hack and slash adventure games. Uh, really gory, really brutal, uh, fun. Definitely kind of funny at parts, but this new one seems like it's really going to be like Last of Us meets God of War. Yeah, so on that point, uh, one of the things that got me really excited is that they were taking almost the the gameplay and the fighting styles from The Last of Us mm-hmm. and putting it into this game, which and with this topic, with like a uh, mythological thing like this, with Kratos and all that, mm-hmm. having like that kind of a fighting style in it and like that, because The Last of Us was 120% strategic because mm-hmm. you had to creep, you had to, you had to use your ammo and your melee weapons and things like that smart. You had to be smart with everything. Yeah, you're not running into a uh, no. room and taking out ten clickers. You you gotta die immediately. Which I like that a lot because like a game we're playing right now, both of us Far Cry Five, mm-hmm. not a whole lot of strategy to it because I'm just going in there and shooting <laughs> yeah, shit yeah. up, and I'm having like my bear cheeseburger just go in there and kill everyone else. <laughs> so I'm really looking forward to this game. The fact that it's getting this high a score, it's like I, I'm like six to midnight, dude. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I, I, I get you. I get you. I I'm very excited for this, and. I, I don't really think that I'm going to miss out a whole lot by not playing the others. Mm-hmm. I've been told, I don't think I've been, so. I've been told by friends, like, oh, dude, you have, you have to play them, though. But, like, <laughs> if I don't have to, I'm, I'm going to dive into this uh, as blind as possible because it looks like it's going to be a good time. This looks definitely... I, I will say, probably you'll understand Kratos' motivations and characters a little bit more if you play the first three. But mm-hmm. this one seems to be set in North Miso- Mythology as opposed to Greek mythology. Mm-hmm. Kratos, so he killed all the gods um, there. Yep. And now he's fighting the Norse guard, gods. He has a family now. It seems like this is going to be somewhat standalone. So I don't think it's going to be like, you have to you know, know what happened in the other ones. Yeah, I'm sure, I'm sure there's going to be a few callbacks. Mm-hmm. Uh, w- one thing I haven't been able to check out yet is I guess IGN did a really, really well done recap of all the other games to mm. lead you into this. Yeah, so, so we may as well pro- just check that out. Yeah, I'm probably yeah. just going to check that out and then jump right into this. I'm, I'm very, very excited. Mm. This is the kind of game where if I didn't have Gamefly, I'd probably just buy it the day of. Right. Uh, but with Gamefly, I'm going to get it like two days after anyway, but uh, I'm very excited. Yeah, I'm, so uh, Gamefly, you know, if you want to uh, just like give us a sponsor, whatever. Dylan's an avid yeah. user. He's chilling for you without even getting paid. Let's go. Correct. Let's do something here. Please like give me like a free month or something. At least, because <laughs> our, our app, we're, we're not taking any advertisers. Mm-hmm. You know, we're, we're we're not taking any Joe Schmo Plumbing Company out of like right. North Boston. Yeah. You know, we're, we're we're waiting for the big ones like GameFly. So GameFly, <laughs> you know, come to us. Oh man! But, so I just wanted to do real quick, just go IGN ten out of ten, right? Yes. Eurogamer ten out of ten. Polygon yes. ten out of ten. These are hundreds. I don't know if those are ten out of tens. Digital Chumps also hundred. PlayStation Universe ninety five. PlayStation ninety two. Metro Gamer nine out of ten. This is crazy. I 
I was concerned. I didn't know how it was going to transfer, and it looked like that uh, they've knocked this one right out of the park. Uh, Sony uh, Santa Monica. I'm also a little nervous because when you give something a like 10 out of 10, you're saying it's perfect. Right. And I have never played a perfect game before in my life. Maybe like The Last of Us. Mm-hmm. I would say it's probably been the closest to a perfect game I've ever, the most perfect game I've ever played. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's going in with a lot of a lot of hype, and I hope that the hype isn't too too real. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? Mm-hmm. No, I get you. Um, because, like I said, I'm going in blind, so I'm not going with like a nostalgia effect or anything like that. Mm-hmm. So I hope it's not too hype. Right. And I don't think it will because I don't think this many people would be giving it a 95, between a 95 and a 100 with it not being fucking insane. Mm-hmm. So I'm 10 out of 10 excited and, and can't wait. Yeah, I I also can't wait. And I'm glad I bought a PS4. <laughs> so to jump into our next news topic, Brian, I saw a little movie this week. At what was this movie? Fine O'Neill Cinemas in Littleton, Mass., which you should check out, which mm. is also not sponsoring this podcast, but yeah, maybe we they should. We just said we're not going to do Little Places, but you know, if you guys also want to sponsor us, that's fine. I saw A Quiet Place. Ooh, how is this? Which is directed by John Krasinski, Scott, starring John Krasinski and his real life wife, Emily Blunt, as mm. his in movie wife. And obviously, most people know the backdrop of this movie a modern horror thriller, A Quiet Place. <laughs> A family of four must navigate their lives in silence after mysterious creatures that hunt by sound threaten their survival. Pretty self-explanatory. So basically, no spoilers given away. There's not a whole lot of sound in this movie. Mm -hmm. Uh, They basically all essentially communicate through, like, flipping each other off and, like, sign language and things like that. Nice, nice. With, we're not doing a spoiler discussion, Brian. You haven't seen it. Obviously, you've seen the trailers. I know you're excited to see this. Any I'm horror not... movie, I, I'm always excited. And so I'm kind of the opposite. Of them. Yeah, I'm kind of the opposite. I'm not a huge horror guy. Mm. But this movie was really interesting. Obviously, you have Jim from The Office. That's all I really need. Mm. Uh, Emily Blunt from Scario. She's fucking great. Mm. I was really excited. I actually didn't even realize that he directed this until the end credits rolled. And I usually do my research, but I kind of wanted to stay away from anything mm. to do with with the scumbags out there in comment sections and things like that. That's fair enough. Uh, it has a 95 in Rotten Tomatoes, an 86% audience score. I give this movie probably like a 99. Oh, oh, oh. All right, now I have to see this. This movie is really, really, really well done. Mm-hmm. It's only 90 minutes long, so it's not too long. It's actually like literally perfect timing. Mm-hmm. I think, I think two hours might have been too long for this movie because there's not really a... The whole like story itself isn't isn't really like that much to fit in. Like you have this family just surviving in the woods mm-hmm. on this farm, and you know something is going on where they have to be extra careful. Um, I can't really explain that something because that's mm-hmm. a big spoiler. Mm-hmm. I would say the ending of the movie kind of create kind of the whole movie leads to the ending of the movie if that isn't like totally stupid. If you understand what I'm saying, like the whole movie is really we're, like meant we're building to, to it, is meant to get to the ending, which is kind of like because obviously all movies are meant to do that, mm-hmm. but the whole movie is built up to the ending and it, it totally paid off. The acting is unbelievable. I can like maybe see an Academy nomination for Emily Blunt because she's Ooh. fucking amazing. She's a great she, actress. She really is, and you're and you're in a movie that has like maybe thirty lines of dialogue, mm-hmm. if that. Which isn't really much of a spoiler either. Like mm-hmm. I didn't think that. Obviously, they have to talk at some point. Mm-hmm. It's it, it's it was just unbelievable. I, I, I've never had so much anxiety <laughs> watching a movie. Right. And you know there there there's things with kids involved, things like that, mm-hmm. where the anxiety is just building, constantly building. And they they don't. This isn't the type of movie that relies on like the jump loud noises scary type movie Mm -hmm. which is really kind of refreshing because I think that's kind of why I'm not a huge fan of scary movies like that because I'm a big jumper (laughs) right right but this movie like I was floored with how good this movie how good this movie was and people listen to this podcast probably thinking that I just love every single movie I see which is like kind of semi true (laughs) but if you if you date back to Last Jedi, that's not true at all. Mm-hmm. So the maybe, first appearance maybe, on maybe I've just seen years. a lot of very very good movies since Last Jedi come out, which I think 2018 has been a really good movie year so far. Plus, Obviously, it's not like we're we're going to see Truth or Dare. Like no, exactly. I mean, Truth or Dare is 
I have to imagine the front runner for the Academy Awards this year. Uh, true. But A Quiet Place, 120% seriousness. I think this movie should be up towards the end of the year for Best Picture. I think this this could be this year's uh, Get Out. Mm-hmm. It's that type of horror where it's more suspenseful mm-hmm. and a thriller than it is just like a jump scare type of thing. Mm-hmm. But don't get me wrong, it does have those moments. And the monsters are fucking terrifying mm-hmm. once you finally see them. But 120%. Four thumbs up, like definitely goes. I'm I'm trying to do both my thumbs and both my toes right now, yeah. both my my big toes. Uh, <laughs> definitely go see this. I, I I I this is the type of movie where I'm gonna go back and see it again. Oh wow, because okay. it was that well done. But also I don't I now won't have that much anxiety watching it the next mm-hmm. time around because I'm gonna know what happens. But wow. I was like, I was sitting there like my heart was pounding. Which Hi. is well. Let me know when you're gonna see it again, because I don't think Jenny's gonna be into it. So, yeah, bro day, dude. Yes, let's, let's do it. So, all right. So, jumping on to our next news topic, because this is apparently a quick episode, but I think we're already <laughs> like 20 minutes into this. Hey, it's all right, man. It's all right. So, Grand Theft Auto Five, not to be confused with Four or Six, sold is the most profitable entertainment title ever with six billion dollars in sales. So that's taking into account books. Movies, TV mm-hmm. shows, the most profitable entertainment title ever, which that's like one of the craziest stats I've ever heard in my life. Because, mm-hmm. you know, you, you think like something like the Bible would be pretty profitable, but I guess maybe that's not <laughs> entertainment. I don't know. <laughs> I don't think you can aggregate it all. Six billion dollars. And in, 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 the craziest part about this is that this is all units sold. This is not. Um, this is not like including like the DLC and people buying like shark cards and things like that. Mm-hmm. So they sold ninety million units in total, which is it's just, incredible. It, it's like an it's remarkable, really, is the, the way to put it. It's it's I I didn't think that was possible for mm-hmm. anything to sell ninety million things. Mm-hmm. Uh, like I don't think there's ever been ninety million things sold in the <laughs> world. And the G, the GTA that was closest to getting to this. What is San Andreas, which only sold 27 million units. Right. So put that in the perspective that you have more than uh, more than a triple increase, which is insane. That like that's just crazy. Mm-hmm. So, so go ahead, Brian. So GTA 5, obviously a great game. I bought it for the 360 back in the day. I bought it for the Xbox One. So I'm two of these 90 millions. There are only two games in history. That I've sold more than Grand Theft Auto. Mm-hmm. So that is Minecraft, um, which kind of makes sense. Uh, it has 144,000 um, units sold. And then Tetris, which makes a lot of sense. 144 million, you mean? Million, yes, yeah, sorry. Okay, I was going to say that's not that much. <laughs> 144,000, so killed it. No, um, 144 million for Minecraft, 170 million for Tetris. Those are the only two games and you think about minecraft and Tetris. the thing about them is they're accessible to all ages grand theft auto it's a mature game it's you know obviously there are people getting it who are younger but generally it's mostly adults playing these games teenagers to adults yeah no you like you have some sinners out there playing this before (laughs) they're they're 17 right but i yeah no not that we ever played any gta Games I, I uh, no, I was like ten years old playing GTA three, <laughs> like beating up prostitutes. I I I'll t- I tell the story all the time. I was like essentially a pimp in the streets. So yeah, I, I say thing here. I bought this for PlayStation three, and I ended up buying it for PlayStation four, mm-hmm. which the upgrade was well worth the sixty dollars again. Oh I, yeah, I, yeah, definitely. And the fact that the fact that this game, like, what, how I think it came out in two thousand thirteen, we're five years into this almost, mm-hmm. and. It's still pretty relevant. I see people playing this all the time. I think they've done a pretty remarkable job with their online that they come out with free updates a lot. Mm-hmm. They come out with things like the heist. The heist was like a huge game changer to their online because mm-hmm. the heist mission is like essentially like a whole new like campaign for online, like story mode wise and all that. They had one come out just recently. It was like it was like the the outbreak heist. Like it was like the end of the world. I I didn't have the chance to play because I've been I was at that point I was stuck in Fortnite. <laughs> But it's pretty like they've done a really good job of remaining relevant, which I think played into them selling this much because they update a lot of their online, which obviously online dominates more than anything nowadays. Mm-hmm. 
So I'm I'm surprised it sold 90 million. That's a lot. But at the same time, I'm not because Grand Theft Auto I would probably say is the most recognizable franchise out in games right now, mm-hmm. other than maybe like Call of Duty or Madden or some things like that. Right. So I'm that this now gets me more excited for a Red Dead Redemption mm-hmm. two, which will be coming out this fall, and then the inevitable G- GTA six. Yes. Yes. So I mean, good on Rockstar, dude. Like Rockstar is they, they crush it every single time it comes out. So this is it's it's nice to see. A company like Rockstar, who very rarely fails you, be able to get an achievement like this. So you know, mm-hmm. who who knows the Rockstar? Yeah, man, I I'm so excited for Red Dead Redemption Two, and I'm really excited to see how they incorporate. Um, you know, they have GTA Online, which is mm-hmm. obviously, like you said, one of the main reasons this has stayed so relevant over the years. And I can't wait to see what they do for Red Dead Redemption Two in that aspect. Mm-hmm. No, yeah, because I, I remember uh, Red Dead Redemption's online uh, for PS3. Mm-hmm. It was fun. It was fun. Nothing like Grand Theft Auto V online. Mm-hmm. Obviously, to- two totally different games, but I, that, I, I'm that i very excited to see what Red Dead Redemption 2 is going to be like for multiplayer with the big jump they took with GTA V. Yeah, it's... I mean, I got I to gotta do it, Dylan. Every episode. It's going to be like Westworld online. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Still have not. I'm running out of days. It's like uh, the clock is ticking down, and mm-hmm. I, I, every time I check the clock, I get a little more nervous. <laughs> this is too much good entertainment out there. I think it comes out. Oh, sh- I think it comes out like the twenty uh, seventh. I think it's later than that. I think it's the twenty ninth or something like that. Yeah, twenty yeah, ninth would be a Sunday. Okay, so I have two what, weeks was, exactly. Two, weeks, two a like time nearly, of recording. Nearly the hour to watch. <laughs> one season so i will do it it's only maybe, 10 episodes <laughs> maybe by the time we we record our our avengers preview i will have seen the whole okay. season so, and we get a little discussion ah uh, that'd be very fun all right to jump into our final news category which we will be very quick with because this quick episode is now turning into the longest episode ever <laughs> we have game of thrones who it's nice to be able to finally talk game of thrones because we really haven't had the chance to and because it's going to be like four years in between season seven and season eight game of thrones shot a battle scene that took 55 days yeah that's crazy i've never done 55 days worth of things in my life Mm -hmm. i you know i maybe like i've worked a job once for 55 days (laughs) so game of thrones shot a battle sequence all at night for 55 days i would have to assume that this battle sequence is with the night king Mm -hmm. and the white walkers yeah, I have to, you have to assume that because yeah. that's inevitably going to be happening, I assume, very, very quickly into season eight because we have, like, what, six episodes all together, I believe? Mm-hmm. Rumor has it they're all, like, two hours long, which... They're is, all going to be movies, essentially. Yeah, which... Oh, dude, I'm so excited. Oh, my God. Yeah, talking about this right now, I almost, <laughs> like, I'm kind of at a lot of thoughts yeah. for words. Uh, 55 days is very long. I think, I think something like for Battle of the Bastards, which was... One of the more remarkable things I've ever seen on television. I think no they doubt, shot it for no doubt. 25 days. Mm-hmm. So add on like a whole extra month of shooting mm-hmm. and you're going to get this battle sequence. And so the producers uh, wrote a little note to the cast, which is kind of what start, sparked this whole thing. Uh, I don't think this was supposed to get out, but obviously it did. <laughs> it did immediately. <laughs> uh, this is for the Night Dragons for enduring 55 straight nights, for enduring the cold, the snow, the rain, the mud, the sheep shit of Tome and the winds of, I can't even tell you that word, Magarom, Magramorn? Magramorn looks good to me. When tens of millions of people around the world watch this episode a year from now, they won't know how hard you work, they won't care how tired you were, or how tough it was to do your job in sub-freezing temperatures. They'll just understand that they're, they're watching something that has never been done before. And that's because of you. Thank the you, the types. The types. Season eight, Game of Thrones. Yeah, like reading that. I back speaking back to six to midnight. I am now a full midnight. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a raging midnight going on over here. Anything Game of Thrones, I live, breathe, die. Mm-hmm. Uh, the books, I'll even like listen to the audibles after podcasts, obviously mm-hmm. the TV show. I'm very very excited for season eight. I it's it sucks that we have to wait this long, but I really think. Season eight is going to be the greatest thing television has ever seen. I agree. And it's tough 
to say that and not overhype it. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, uh, Game of Thrones obviously will not be on my top three most underrated TV shows because uh, no. it's to me honestly uh, takes takes the greatest TV show ever uh, title for me. And I, I had I heard a lot of people give season seven a lot of shit mm -hmm. because they and they started to have to rush through a lot of things. Which you have to understand. I mean, I, I think the biggest mistake the Double D's made was that they didn't make the season seven ten episodes. Mm -hmm. um, and I think they ended up doing themselves in with that because they 120% rushed through some things, which they wouldn't have in any other season. Yeah. And a lot of people were pissed about that. It was still better than anything on TV at the time. Mm -hmm. uh, and anybody to say that is wrong, honestly, <laughs> because uh, even if it's not – because. It, it, season seven was not the greatest season ever. It's not season three, four, or five. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, it's there were so many amazing feats that were done in season seven, like the battle between the Dothraki and the Lannister army. Yeah. Um. So, the fact that they're taking fifty-five nights to shoot a battle sequence, which will probably m may might not be a whole entire episode, but it'll probably be like forty minutes worth of of battle. Yeah, they'll have which, some like scenes of okay this is about to happen let's have like some last character moments for the characters who are presumably going to die and like I said I would have to assume that this is the battle with the night with the night king and the night mm -hmm. walkers and I would have to assume that that's going to happen pretty quickly into the season mm -hmm. because they went through east watch by or east watch by the sea and that's like pretty damn close to winterfell uh yeah so it's got to be happening right away so I think we're going to see this relatively soon, maybe like second or third episode into the season, mm -hmm. but I can't wait. And the, this little note right here is like is like Game of Thrones porn, and not like <laughs> not like the parody porn. Mm -hmm. I'm talking, I just mean like like music to my ears type right. porn. Uh, this is the, I'm very very excited, and this is kind of building the hype train. I'm I like part of me has always been hoping that they're just going to surprise me, like hey, it's coming back in July, summer this summer, but it's not. It's coming back spring 2019, which yeah. I mean, in fairness, editing this one battle. Uh, it's gonna be um, a lot. Yeah, no, this is not like a, this is not like a quick like like couple hours type mm -hmm. thing. Uh, this is like the the editing for what I'm this alone, mm -hmm. like you said, but the entire season is gonna be a bitch. Um, yeah, so but, shout uh, out to the crew and shout out to the editors and all the people who you don't think about because, goddamn. Yeah. So Game of Thrones season eight, fifty five night battle, pretty long. Can't wait. Mm -hmm. So, all right, let's jump. Let's uh, take a quick break. Yep. And when we return, we'll be doing our quick episode, which is now turned into the long episode, our top three most underrated TV shows. All right, let's do it. All right, guys. Welcome back to our main event. We have our top three most under underrated TV shows of all time for us. Brian, uh, as I was telling you before the show started, I literally didn't narrow down my top three until like five seconds before we hit record <laughs> because I was so back and forth. My number one uh, was pretty solid. My two and three were not so much because I kind of – think we should have ended up doing a top five but at the same time I think it's more important to go into detail mm -hmm. of our top three because obviously you know the top three are more important than the last two yep. if that, yep. is that how math works <laughs> so uh, why don't we just jump right into it uh, Brian would you like to go first sure thing so I want to start off with potentially the comedy show that has shaped my comedy more than anything and that is the show that the internet loves and the general public completely ignores, Community. Have you watched Community? I've seen bits and pieces. Uh, so Community, you have Childish Gambino in it, correct? That is correct. And you have uh, Mr. Chow from The Hangover? <laughs> yes. Uh, <laughs> Mr. Chow from The Hangover. Yes. Um, 
His name is Ken Jung, and he plays Ben. That's Chan. who it is. Yes. 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 Okay. Is that was that a racism? No, no. I mean, that is his character in The Hangover. So. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. Resume. We'll cut that. <laughs> All right, and then uh, we also have Joel McHale. You might know him from The Soup. Um, Jillian Jacobs, you might know her from Love on Netflix. Perhaps mm-hmm. not, because I don't think anyone's watched that show, including myself. Um, Danny Pudi, who you might know as the guy from Captain America the Winter Soldier who opens the door while they're uh, trying to take over S.H.I.E.L.D. Sure. Uh, sure, yeah. Absolutely. How, can you, how can you forget that role? <laughs> Uh, vet Nicole Brown, with people our age might know, is the movie theater manager from Drake and Josh. Um, Allison Brie, who you might know from Glow on Netflix. I would say Allison Brie has probably taken off mm. the most from this show, other than like I think Josh. Yeah, uh, Donald Glover, which you might know from everything, yes. all the time, including the him looking fucking perfect as <laughs> Lando Carusi in the upcoming yes. Solo movie. But so continue, excited. continue. He's also hosting SNL as Donald Glover in musical guest Childish Gambino. So yes, uh, Ken Jong from the Hangover films, as well as Doctor Ken, Chevy Chase from SNL, and then tons of movies and comedy roles. And Jim Rash, um, who honestly you might know him, also on a Netflix show. Um, he, he does he hosts a discussion show about Stranger Things. Afterwards, I don't know if you've ever watched one of those, but it's decently entertaining. He has actors and writers from the various episodes come on and they break down the show. Yep. Okay. Yep. And yeah, that's the main cast. It's created by Dan Harmon, the creator of Rick and Morty. Mm-hmm, of course. Um, and then he, I think he was also an executive producer on the Sarah Silverman show. Yep. And it's about a disbarred lawyer who faked his degree. So he has to go back to school and get a real degree so that he can go back to being a lawyer. Is the aforementioned disbarred lawyer, is that uh, Joe Joel? Uh, yeah, yep, okay. He's the main character. Cool. So in going, to, he meets Britta Perry, who is played by Jillian Jacobs. He wants to sleep with her, so he starts a fake study group for Spanish class, and then she thinks it's a real study group, so she invites all the other characters, and then it's just them, you know, becoming a quote-unquote community while going to community college and becoming almost like a pseudo-family. And it's just a really great, smart show. Some of the episodes are the most ambitious things I've ever seen on television. It was criminally underviewed while it was on, but right now you can find it if you're in Canada, on Netflix, if you're not in Canada, um, and then you have to actually pay for it. Who is it not? It's not on Hulu, huh? Um, it has been able. You can stream it through Hulu. Okay, I was about Sorry. to say, kind of off track, real quick. Uh, I'll, I'll get the computer in a second. If you don't have Hulu, definitely get Hulu. Okay. Uh, Netflix. I will. <laughs> Netflix uh, is falling off with their un- with their non-original content. Everything is on Hulu uh, gotcha. now. Uh, and it's like everything you miss, like a Family Guy or a Always Sunny is up the, the day after. Mm-hmm. So another free advertisement we're kind of just giving out, but I guess it kind of sounds like we're sponsoring Hulu. Uh, so brought to you by our sponsor, Hulu. Make sure you check out. <laughs> I, I actually have to check this out because I did not know that it had so many cool products. So I think I think the thing with Community, uh, it, it's an NBC show, correct? Started on NBC, ended up finishing its run on the short-lived Yahoo screens. Oh, of course. Yahoo so, how could you forget? It um, may have been the show that um, plummeted Yahoo Screens. I never even heard of Yahoo Screens. Because he spent a ton of money buying it and producing it, and still nobody really watched it on Yahoo Screens. And so I think the screens failed. I think the tough thing with Community is that it fell in an awkward slot where it was competing with uh, the end of The Office mm-hmm. as well as Parks and Rec. Mm hmm. So I think that's maybe why I didn't get the recognition it deserved. Right. But like with the cast you named, it's the kind of show that I've always wanted to check out, but I just never have. Like, Please that makes do, sense. man. Treat yourself. And I, I guess that's <laughs> kind of like, I guess that kind of really sums up like underrated because mm. it's, I, I mean, it doesn't get the uh, recognition it's, it deserves because it was going up against those two, which are mm. two of the best comedy television comedies ever. Dude, um, Thursday nights on NBC used to be lit. It was The Office, 30 Rock, Community, and Parks and Rec all in a row. Yep. Unbelievable yep. night. Yeah, I totally forgot about Parks and Rec, too. Yeah. All right. So to jump into my number three, I have a little show that probably none of you have heard about, but you have probably seen on Netflix called The Last Kingdom. Ooh, tell me about this. So, The Last Kingdom, honestly, is like a more realistic 
uh, version of Vikings mm-hmm. on History Channel, and a less magical, less like sexy Game of Thrones. Okay. So Last Kingdom takes place in the year 872. Okay. Uh, as many of the uh, kingdoms in England have fallen to the Danes, but I'm, I'm going to call the Danes the Vikings because that's who they are. Mm-hmm. Uh, leaving the final kingdom of Wessex standing alone and defiant under the man, under the command of King Alfred. And basically it just, the, the show kicks off right away where uh, this, uh, the kingdom's under siege immediately from the Vikings. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's pretty brutal. I would say it's pretty realistic fighting once it starts happening. Mm-hmm. Uh, and in the end, it ends up following a character, a man named Uhtred, who was born a Saxon and was end up raised by the Vikings. Mm-hmm. And it basically like surrounds him kind of battling that, the fact that he is, lo- I guess, loyal to the Saxons, uh, loyal to the Vikings, but at the same time recognizes his birth as a Saxon. Mm-hmm. And... It's two seasons long, eight episodes each. Was it eight episodes each? Uh, I, know, I definitely know that season two was eight episodes. Yeah. It's not very long at all. Uh, season two actually just came out last summer, so it's still relatively uh, relatively um, relevant. Uh, Is it an ongoing episode. show? So I think that it's done. Mm-hmm. I, I don't think there's any more episodes coming out. I could be gotcha. wrong. Yeah. It's, a t- it's like a BBC show, so there was like two years in between mm. season one and season so two. So maybe in a few years we get a season Which, three. Yeah, it's really tough with BBC shows because you never really know, like, A, what Netflix has bought and if they bought in the sh- like the, the, the entire rights to the show or just the right to showing the show. Mm. Um, but I really recommend it. It's a really easy watch. The only problem I've had with it is sometimes it gets really slow. Mm. But at the same time, in terms of like scenes, there's sometimes a lot of slow scenes, mm-hmm. but at the same time, the pacing of the show, like we've, like we've jumped maybe like ten years in between two seasons, mm-hmm. so the show paces rather quickly. Right. It doesn't it doesn't affect the show for me at all, uh, but like I said, I I really enjoyed the the. the the subject with everything it was really realistic i never really got into vikings on on the history History channel Channel. i have a it's like the history channel like i'm i don't really want to go to the history channel like a dramatic television show but i have fair enough yeah but i like the last kingdom a lot and it's it's top three for me because never heard anybody else talk about it before anybody Mm -hmm. i've known at least Uh, like the reddit forums are pretty big on this show okay yeah but i 120 percent Re- recommend people to check it out, especially Game of Thrones fans, especially mm-hmm. maybe if you're Vikings fans, Lord of the Rings fans. So maybe it's something very... to hold us out till the next season of Game of Thrones. Hundred percent. It's like I said, it's a quick watch. There's not that many episodes, but it's the production's very, very well done. The acting's very well done. Mm-hmm. The action's very well done, and the overall story is interesting to me. And like I said, it paces pretty well. It paces quickly. You don't feel like you've been cheated on some things. Mm-hmm. I guess this is actually a book series, which I never even heard of the book series until uh, I saw the show first, Mm. which is kind of different than most. Um, But I heard the book series is very, very good. And it's the point where maybe I'll check out the book series because typical, like, book people are like, oh, like, the book was so much better. It's going to be better. Yep, yep. But Last Kingdom, seasons one and two, particularly season one, very, very good television that I've never heard anybody talk about. Uh, And definitely, I think it deserves... Uh, top three treatment. So that is number three for me, The Last Kingdom. Awesome. All right. So my number two is The 4400. So this is a show that was on USA. It ran from 2004 to 2007. Uh, it is a science fiction television series produced by CBS Paramore in association with B-Sky B Retrograde 83. It, in the pilot episode, an enormous ball of light deposits a group of exactly 4,400 people in the Cascade Range foothills near Mount Rainier, Washington. Each of the 4,400 had disappeared in a beam of white light at various times starting in 1938. None of the 4,400 have aged from the time of their disappearance. And they're confused, disoriented, and they remember nothing between the time of their disappearance and their return. So... This is a show that's at a kind of awkward time for television. Um, it's, it was airing right alongside Lost, which is another mm-hmm. kind of like big concept, important show to the yep. history of TV, really kind of show that there can be prestige drama on mm-hmm. TV. So the budget is low and it's a little tough to watch 
when you compare it to current day TV shows. But the story is really interesting. You know, it's the kind of take on alien abduction. There's very cool characters. Basically, the two main characters are partners kind of uh, keeping a watch over the 4400, helping them reintegrate into society. Each episode for like the first three season focus on one member of the 4400 in particularly and something that's weird or, you know, what they're doing. And then there's obviously an overall like kind of influencing force um, that's maybe up to no good. And I love the show. I believe it's still on Netflix. You can watch it there. Uh, like I said, it's a little rough, but I think it's really good. It's a show I have seen. Mm. Uh, not that I haven't, I haven't like watched it up. So it's a show I've seen around. Mm. I, remember, I remember seeing it on uh, USA, like the trailers for stuff and things like that. Yeah. It seems like a really intriguing concept to me. But like you said, going up against Lost, especially back in that television time, it was basically like everybody was watching the same thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it which, wasn't the 4400, which is why it only got 44 episodes. No, no. <laughs> was that intended, though, to have only 44? No, I don't think so, because season three ended up with, like, a huge... Or season four, rather, ended up with a huge, like, holy crap, this changes everything. Here's the next chapter of the story. And then I was like, all right, it's canceled. Bye. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah. That's, that was the unfortunate... Especially things with TV nowadays, where shows like that are given probably a bigger budget and mm -hmm. more leniency nowadays than yeah. they would have back then right. because it's all about streaming and content people are putting out at this mm -hmm. point with TV shows and um, so you've like semi sold me on both of these shows you presented so far uh, both shows I have not seen yet so I'm I'm looking forward to checking these out once I finally watch goddamn Westworld <laughs> and uh, I would say a big draw the probably biggest actor in the show Marsha Ali um, one of his first like big roles. So yeah. I'll always be like, oh, it's the guy from the 4400. I guess now though, it's like, oh no, it's the Oscar winner. Glad, I'm glad <laughs> you brought that up because I thought I was misremembering him being in this. But yeah, Marsha Ali, um, one of my favorite actors out in Hollywood right now, mm. but is also the star of True Detective season three. Oh, so, so hype. Yes. Um, so the 4400, Brian's number two. My number two which was the one I had the most conflict with because I'm not really sure if it's underrated, but I personally feel it is. It's a show that got 10 seasons, 217 episodes, so it's definitely not a short-lived television show. Uh, that would be the formerly WB, now CW Smallville. Oh, okay, which yeah. I have mentioned uh, numerous times on the show, especially mm -hmm. during our Super Superman Spotlight Yes. Um, Smallville, which came out in 2001. Actually, it, it's funny. The show ended up being pushed back because its original release date was on 9-11. Ooh, All right, yeah. So the day it was going to air, it did not. And so it was pushed back. And I actually remember seeing this live uh, with my dad. This is one of the first shows I ever watched religiously, week by mm -hmm. week. Um, obviously, this was back before streaming binging things like that right. i actually remember i remember watching the season through two finale of this show recorded on a vhs tape <laughs> which shows like change in times so but this is uh yeah. this is one of the first shows i ever really got into 2001 i was eight years old mm -hmm. so an eight-year-old obviously you don't have many like shows you're watching week, week by week mm -hmm. smallville blew me away uh, it's what really got me into the whole superhero uh, fascination mm -hmm. it, it, for those of you who don't know Smallville follows a young Clark Kent sh who struggles to find his place in the world as he learns to harness his alien powers for good and deals with the typical troubles of teenage life in Smallville, Kansas so it's both like a coming of age story well it's like a, literally a coming of age story as well as a Superman story as well as a shitload of romance mm -hmm. there's a whole bunch of drama Smallville for me I think that if it came out nowadays, had a bigger budget, had the ability to be streamed, mm -hmm. I think this would be one of the biggest shows on television right now. Right. I think that it, it blows Arrow, Flash. Yeah, that was actually going to be my next question. How does it out compare? Out of the water. It, it, it doesn't compare to me, to be <laughs> honest with you. Right. I, and I think the, the Arrow and Flash are very, very good. But uh, with Smallville, it has my favorite portrayals of almost every single 
character. I think Tom Welling as Clark Kent slash Superman, and at one point in the show, he ends up going by the Blur. Uh, mm-hmm. as, as, he's my favorite Clark Kent and Superman so far, and I really like oh, Henry wow, Cable. Yeah. Uh, we have Michael Rosenbaum, who is far and away the best Lex Luthor ever portrayed on television. Mm-hmm. Uh, Eric Durrance is Lois Lane, who very, very slimly takes my favorite Lois Lane. Uh, mm-hmm. She doesn't come until season four. Gotcha. Um, but she ends up becoming a prime part of the show. Uh, and Ed O'Toole as Martha Kent, who actually ended up playing Lana Lang in the third Superman movie back in the 80s. Mm-hmm. So she has a little bit of a, of a Superman history, uh, what's, history to yeah. her. And John Snyder as Jonathan Kent, who actually he was famous for the Dukes of Hazard. Mm-hmm. He was one of the, the, uh, the Duke boys. <laughs> and he is definitely my favorite portrayal of Jonathan Kent as well. You eventually in this show get uh, the Green Arrow who <coughs> is played by uh, Justin Hartley I believe is his last name who is uh, very big right now because he's on This Is Us. Mm-hmm. Uh, you get Aquaman, your boy. Oh, I love this actually, guy. Did you ever see Blue Mountain State? Oh, <laughs> uh, yes. One of my favorite shows. So the guy that plays Thad in that mm. uh, plays Aquaman in Smallville. Yes. And he actually does a very, very good job. It's so good. Other, other <laughs> than Green Arrow... Works. Other than Green Arrow, they're not series regulars. Mm-hmm. Green Arrow eventually becomes a series regular. Um, but you do get you get people like Jimmy Olsen. You get Supergirl at one point. You get General Zod, who the guy played who played General Zod, did very, very well in this. You get Doob's Day. Mm-hmm. So you get it all. Uh, like I said, I, I'm putting it on here as underrated because it only has a 7.5 on IMDb. Mm-hmm. Which I feel comes from its later days. Seasons like seven through ten, its final through four seasons, aren't the best. But seasons one through five, mm-hmm. and I guess you can even throw six in there, are some of the best things I've seen on TV. They went with the, especially back then, a really small budget. You think you're taking a superhero show, which superhero uh, materials back then properties were not nearly what they were now. Like mm-hmm. 2001, you have. What do you have back then? Like, I don't even think the first Spider-Man movie. Yeah, maybe come out X-Men. I think you had X-Men, and that's about it. I think. Uh, like, yeah, other than the old superhero or Superman and the, Batman like, movies. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. I think that was really about it. So I think this show was what really kicked off the superhero television, mm-hmm. because once this was over, we didn't have a Marvel's Agent of Shield or anything like that. Once this was over, we uh, we got Arrow like two years later. Mm. Totally different, like, TV universe, too. Um, but if you haven't watched Smallville, I uh, 120% recommend it. It's it, it's campy in the first season, but it's not campy and cheesy to the point where you're like, oh, what the fuck am I watching? <laughs> right, right. But then it really gets into, like, it gets dark at some points. It, the, the, they don't back down from being able to use a lot of things with Superman. Like, mm. they don't back down from using things like General Zod. They don't back down from using things like Kryptonite and all that. Right. Um, I think the most famous poster for Superman, for this Smallville as well, is Clark tied up in a cornfield with an S painted on his chest. Mm. Uh, I remember that actually being, like, the billboard that was shown around right. when, when the show came out. Uh, so, number two for me, Smallville. It's it's on Hulu, the entire series, uh, not to promote Hulu again. I, I, I cannot say more good things about this show. Is it an hour it's, long or half hour long series? Hour long. Right, so like cool. back then with all like the commercials. 40, like 40 minutes. Minutes. Yeah. Yeah. About that. Uh, I can't give it number one because like I said, it ended up getting 10 seasons, 217 episodes, mm-hmm. like uh, passing a hundred episodes is impressive. The television, right. like getting the 217 is really impressive. I think that it like went two, three or four years too long. Mm-hmm. I think they dragged out him eventually becoming Superman because the whole show eventually gets to not really much of a spoiler because that's kind of like the premise. It eventually gets them finally becoming a man kind of like, kind of like, uh, American alien mm-hmm. where the whole premise is the, the events of his life becoming Superman. This is like the show played out version of American alien. Mm-hmm. Um, I can't give it a number one because like I said, I think it was too popular <laughs> for the time. I think that a lot of people nowadays have probably heard of it, but never seen it. Uh, which is definitely why it's on this list, but I can't give it the number one spot, but I think it definitely deserves number two and mm. uh, 20% go and watch it. Yeah. So my number one is my favorite show ever. I think it's a perfect TV show. Uh, it, it had really bad ratings, 
like a million people watched each episode, mm-hmm. which is terrible. It was on HBO. It is The Leftovers. So The Leftovers starts three years after a global event called The Sudden Departure, the inexplicable simultaneous disappearance of 140 million people or 2% of the world's population on October 14th, 2011. Following that event, mainstream religion declined and a number of cults emerged, most notably the Guilty Remnant. So that's the setup for season one. It's hard to articulate because there's just so much about this show that's amazing, but that is the basic premise. There are people trying to pick up the pieces of their life that have been shattered when their loved ones and people you know just vanish into thin air, defying like all laws of nature and physics. Mm-hmm. And so it's kind of like an apocalypse show without the apocalypse. You know, this horrible thing has happened to everyone, but there's enough people left where they can continue on fairly normally, but everyone just has that in the back of their mind, you know? And the first, like, five episodes have a really, like, dark and serious tone, and then they actually took a break while filming and kind of rewrote the back half of the first season and from then to season three it's some of the most amazing television i've ever seen it stars um justin thoreau christopher eccleson amy brenneman Liv tyler uh carrie coon and then scott glenn who you might know from at stick from daredevil yeah on the marvel netflix series he's fantastic in this and please everybody go watch the show it's so good (laughs) So I'm glad you had this on there because I knew you were going to have this on Oh, there. yeah, I've been waiting. <laughs> uh, this was my number three that I ended up booting last mm-hmm. minute knowing you were going to have it. Right. Not like because you told me, but I knew, I knew like I pay attention to you, Brian. Right, no, I appreciate you're my, you're it. My, you're my pal. Uh, I knew this was going to be on there. I didn't know it was going to be your number one. I'd assume so. Mm-hmm. Um, leftovers, seasons two and three, mainly season two, yeah. some of the best television I've witnessed. Mm-hmm. Um, the sh- like you said, the first season, it's good. It's slow. Mm. Really, they revolutionize themselves with season two. Yeah, yeah, they uh, have like it's something that about it that's very different from the first season that I don't want to go into. But yeah, one thing that you have to make clear: this is a really fucking depressing <laughs> show. Yeah, this is a very very depressing show. Mm. Like you don't watch the show to be happy. Uh, one one of the things that sold me with the show and the episode that really like pulled me in where I was kind of like I'm all in on this mm. is when um, Matt Jameson, you know that character I'm talking mm-hmm. about, who he was like the uh, the priest guy. character. Yeah. Yes, um, when he ended up taking all his. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't want to spoil it for anybody. Yeah, no. There's uh, an episode that's like it's a Matt centric episode in season one. That's actually the same exact episode that made me go all in on the series too was one of my favorite episodes of television I've seen. Um, that actor, he's got a little bit of a creepy way to him. Mm-hmm. But that episode itself, I think it's like halfway through season one, is one of, like I said, the best television episodes I've seen. Like, top 20 TV episodes, I guess, is where I could put it. It's very, very good. It's all based around him, which was nice because you had to take a break at this point in the show from... Well, Evolving it around everyone else. Yep. And he was a character in the show I did not like up until that episode. He's not very likable no, up until not. that. He's, uh, uh, I believe it's called The Book of Matt. Yes. That episode. 100, 100, you're 120% because I, I remember that episode totally. Mm. Yes. That was the episode that sold me with this. I was all in it after this at this point. Um, it jumps around a lot too, uh, as I believe you mentioned. Mm. Like season seasons one and two uh, take place in entirely different places yep. as season three. Um, it is produced by Damon Lindelof, which I'm not sure if you mentioned, who yet, uh, obviously no. uh, wrote and produced Lost. Mm, a lot um, of it, yeah. It ha- and like it has a lot of like Lost-ish type, mm. like just un- un- like realistic <laughs> spiritual things happening to it. Yeah, I would uh, the way I describe it is it's the spiritual successor to Lost. It's the next chapter of Lost. That's very fair. This is yeah. That that's that's like a fair thing to say. Mm. It only has an 8.2 on IMDb, which right. I'm actually surprised it's that high. Mm. Uh, I, uh, but this is 120% and un- one of the more unrated TV shows of all time. Yeah, I think that's a very, very fair thing. Like I said, this was a, this was number three for me, and I ended up bumping it. Um, 
but I'm glad you had it on there. But yeah, last of all, le- leftovers for you, uh, number one, a very very. I, good I just yeah, man, I just love it. Just ah oh, man, it's so good, guys. You gotta go see it. So my number one is a little show that only lasted five seasons, only had 38 episodes within those five seasons. So four seasons, sorry, four seasons, only 30 episodes within those four mm. seasons. Not very long. A little show that came out on Cinemax that changed Cinemax from being a very porn type network to a respectable output for television once HBO bought them. But the show is Banshee. Um, Banshee came out in 2013, starring Anthony Starr, who I'm not sure where else you would know him from. Mm. Um, Ivana Milovic. Ulrich Thompson as Kai Proctor. I only say his name because I like that name, Kai Proctor. <laughs> Frankie Faison, who you would actually know from uh, The Wire. Uh, Matt Cer- Servito, who you would know as the FBI agent in The Sopranos. Mm-hmm. Uh, Hu Lee as Job, who is one of my favorite characters on this television show. Uh, I would say probably the most famous person you would know from this. Ah. Uh... If not Matt Cervetto, do you watch uh, your Pretty Little Faces Going to Hell? No. On no, no. Adult Swim? He plays Satan on that. Okay. It's a comedy. Right. Uh, Anthony Starr is pretty famous, but I have not seen him in anything else. Anyway, Banshee is a very, very action-packed TV show. Mm-hmm. It, Cinemax couldn't get too far away from the sex, so it has a lot of sex scenes in it, mm-hmm. but it's not like a porno. I can't stress enough this is not a porno. <laughs> <laughs> Dylan is not sending you to watch porn, guys. This there's is a real but show. The first 20 minutes, there's like three or four sex scenes. It's kind of like okay. the room where it's like a little lot of little sex scenes. They had to like, like, try luckily, to trick all... the viewers into it. They're like, no, this is still Cinemax, guys. <laughs> <laughs> luckily, they're all uh, they're all good-looking people. Right, um, right. But the premise of the show is an ex-con assumes the identity of a murdered sheriff in a small town of Banshee Pen- Banshee. Pennsylvania, where he has some unfinished business. Essentially, the main character, uh, Lucas Hood, who you actually do not find out his real name ever. Um, I believe maybe you find it out in the final episode, but his whole like backdrop is a mystery, and that's kind of where the show revolves around. Mm-hmm. Where Lucas Hood, he gets out of prison, you don't know his name, and you start to see that he, um, his past that he was set up with his then girlfriend who she goes by the name Carrie in the show. She, they're on the run from these guys. You don't know if they're cops. You don't know if they're mobsters. Mm -hmm. Uh, And he ends up sacrificing himself so she can get away. Um, And he ends up going to prison. Right. And I think he was in there for like 10, 15 years. I think it was 16, actually, because it plays into it later in the show. I can't reveal how. Mm -hmm. And he gets out of prison, and he goes to try to find her. And he gets out. Um, he connects with his buddy Job, who is like a tech whiz. And eventually, he finds Carrie, and she is in ben- Banshee, Pennsylvania. He gets the Banshee. Um, he goes into this bar, and he meets this guy, the sheriff, who's named Lucas Hood. Not much of a spoiler either, because it's like it's the it was in the main trailer for all the shows. Mm-hmm. Uh, the sheriff ends up getting shot and killed. And Lucas Hood, being the badass that he is, kills the two guys that killed the sheriff. Um, and then him and the bartender are kind of like, hey, what the fuck do we do now? We have a dead sheriff, and then we have two dead mobsters. Mm-hmm. And it is probably key to mention that the mobsters in this town, as they're in like rural Pennsylvania, is that they're all like an Amish mob. Right. Who is run by Kai Proctor, the guy who I said I liked his name a lot. And so they like, okay, we have to bury this sheriff. We have to bury these two mobsters so they don't know what the fuck happened here. Mm-hmm. And eventually – being this convict that he is, you don't know the backdrop of his story. He assumes uh, the personality as this sheriff, as this sheriff um, was coming in from like California for his very first day as as sheriff, and he conveniently had not met anybody yet. Right. Um, so a little bit of like a silly, like way too convenient storytelling. Uh, it doesn't, it doesn't like mess up the story at all, though. So eventually, you get the four seasons of Lucas Hood. He finds Carrie. Carrie kind of battles because she has a family and two kids now and a husband. Who the husband's actually the DEA. Or, I'm sorry, the district attorney of Banshee. Um, Lucas Hood, who is this fake sheriff, assumes the role as the sheriff, and people will kind of start to put together that he is not a 
a uh, typical sheriff because he's going around and like beating the shit out of people. Right. Um, it's like storming into high schools that are being people being held hostage, being a badass. Mm -hmm. Um, it's tough not to give away a lot without giving away a lot. If that makes any sense. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, it's a, it, four seasons is very perfect for this show. Mm -hmm. Um, the, the way the story changed up a lot really worked and I was worried about it after the first season about how they were going to do this like you can't do this whole show of him just being the sheriff here and not having really any consequences mm -hmm. to it uh, eventually there is and it's really cool because you see him as sheriff kind of battle between he's a sheriff of this of this county and he's also what I forget failed to mention that he's like a master thief Right. which is how you eventually start to piece together his backstory. He ended up stealing diamonds, um, which I think is ended up mentioning in the first episode too. So it's not that much of a, of a um, spoiler. Mm. But he's a master thief. So like he's going around being a sheriff during the day. And then at night he's like doing diamond heists and things like that. Right. Um, it's some of the best action I've seen, not only on television, on like any like entertainment at all mm. between like movies and things like that. The action is unbelievable. It is very, very good. Um, I cannot say enough good things about Banshee. It's the type of show where it's better that you just check it out rather than me talking about it, mm -hmm. um, because viewing it will do it just as much more than my rambling will. Right. Uh, but it's on Cinemax, so if you have Cinemax, um, definitely try it out. I think you can get like Cinemax Go for like a free trial, mm -hmm. uh, and I think you can watch all four seasons within that free trial. It's it's very very good. Like I said, it only lasts four seasons long, only thirty seven episodes, but it's one hundred and twenty percent. Uh, worth the watch. It's actually rated on IMDb as the number 247th overall TV show of all time, nice. which I guess that's kind of low. I guess that doesn't mean it's fully overrated. It has like an 8.4, which is kind of high, mm. um, but I never have heard anybody talk about this show other than myself. And right. I don't know anybody at all who watches it, and it definitely deserves that. Um, so 120% check out Banshee cool. on, on Cinemax. It, it has ended. It ended in 2016, so mm -hmm. you can get through and you will have the uh, satisfying ending that it gave. Um, but yeah, Banshee, man, it's uh, it's fucking awesome. It's the only way to describe it. It's a badass television show, and it's a lot of fun. And it's nice to not have like a show where you're dissecting mm -hmm. everything. You know, right, um, right. it's just, it's just a fun ass television show. It's action packed, and uh, it's it's a good time. Check it out. Cool. All right. Well, I think those are top three shows you should check out. Dylan, would you like to promote anything? Give any shout outs before we head off the air? Uh, no, check out uh, Brian and Dylan take on the world, but yes. uh, more importantly, just check out, we get everything on YouTube. Uh, you know, that's, that's where, uh, that's where all our content is going. Uh, obviously if you're listening to this, you're either on YouTube or iTunes. So mm -hmm. please subscribe to both. Uh, but it's very important to us that we get our, we Good everything YouTube account. Um, as popular as we can. Uh, yeah, because YouTube feeds into iTunes. So, you know, if you guys can just tell one friend, just like, hey, check out this podcast. They're two, you know, not like overly cool guys, but uh, definitely two pretty cool guys to make it talking about I, all kinds I, of stuff. I think I'm a very underwhelming person who pretends to be a very overwhelming person. Maybe we're just like underrated people. I think I'm fairly rated with a lot of people. <laughs> Oh, Brian, man. I think I think you're an underrated guy though, Brian. You're you're top five underrated gut people. <laughs> oh jeez, I the, the four or the five spot though, so like the wouldn't actually about make you the podcast. The, chat... <laughs> <laughs> the things said about you in the chat forums are not warranted. So I'm gonna say you're yeah. the top five more underrated friends. Well, you know, at least they're talking, right? <laughs> uh, not nice things. Well, yeah, We're, it's fine. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for checking out the podcast. Make sure you subscribe on iTunes and YouTube and check out our live streams and fake nerds updates. We'll be back real soon. We will be, but yes, sorry, Brian, not to cut you off, but oh, I wanted to promote our upcoming things, which I haven't fully done yet. Oh, yeah, I guess yeah. I could have did it when you just said, is there anything you want to promote? <laughs> uh, we obviously are going to be doing next week our Avengers preview mm -hmm. of Avengers Infinity War, which will be coming out in two weeks. And then right after that, we will be doing a both spoiler-free and spoiler review of Avengers Infinity War. Yes. Uh, we did not get the free screening uh, like two weeks before like everybody else does. Yeah, you uh, know, it's whatever. We, next year, next time, next Avengers. We will be paying for our tickets just like the common man, but we're also like a common podcast. Right. We're in it for uh, for the little people. So we have a, we have a fun two weeks coming up. Uh, it's really Avengers... Avengers base. This is really what we have been building to since we started this podcast. Uh, so I can't wait for the next two weeks, buddy. And it's, uh, it's good to be back. Absolutely. Thanks again for listening, guys. Love Bye. you guys. See ya.